Good morning, y'all. Here we go again, right, with the y'all. But, hey, it's Sunday. It's the Lord's Day. Let's try to keep it holy. <laughs> right? Try to keep it holy. But excited because my pastor just shared a message, chapter 6 of Genesis. And I was like, wow, this goes in line with what I've been doing. Like, you know, letting the world know that, you know, God is going to get tired of his people being crazy and wicked. So I'm going to read it. Wickedness in the world. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be 120. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted, check that out, the Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals and the birds. I am skipping small sections in the middle. And then the, along comes a guy, Noah, a righteous guy. He was blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said, Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Look at that now out of all the people on this planet at that time. The world was desperately wicked and evil. Now, does that not sound like today? That's what our pastor said today. Pastor Joe Foch, great pastor. He said today, look around. Look at the world. Look at the condition of the world. Look at the way things are. Look at the way people are behaving. There is violence everywhere. There is corruption everywhere. Heck, we as human beings invent ways, new ways of doing evil and being wicked, you know? For those of you that aren't going to attend church today, today is your church service. I'm going to share with you. Um, there's no denying that you turn on the news, you see, you see, you see, you hear, you see. Um, and the thoughts of every human heart are desperately wicked and evil. And, and along comes this righteous man, Noah. He's blameless, right? He walks with God. He prays to God. He's a Christian, obviously. He honors God in all that he does. My pastor said that he's a man of prayer. He spends time talking to God and walking with God. And you can talk and walk with God right now in your every day. That's right. You can. It's your conscious decision just to talk to the Lord because the Spirit of the Lord is what sustains you. He put his breath in your lungs, and that's why you breathe, and that's why your heart beats. He's a part of you. He created you. And if you're not walking with him and you're not talking to him, then you're going to wind up in this class right here, the wicked, right? Even though you think you're not wicked, if you're walking, if you're not walking with God and talking with God, reading his word and praying and, and teaching your family about God, then guess what? You're in rebellion. And if you're in rebellion, that would be considered wickedness. Now, I'm not saying shave your head, kill a goat, sacrifice a cow, or burn some incense. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying join a cult or join a church. What I'm saying is... You yourself, alone in your private time, when you get up in the morning, you can say, thank you, Lord, for this amazing day. Thank you, Lord, that I'm here on earth. Thank you, Lord, for my home. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my kids. And in times, good times and in bad times, talk to him. Read the good book. He loves you that much. He wrote this instruction manual for you. So back to what we're talking about here. Get right with God. Get in tune with God. Start talking to God. Because your days, your, day, your days are gonna, your days are numbered. You're gonna die. You're gonna, you're gonna cross over, and you're going to meet God. You, there's no way around that. There's a divine appointment, and the the, the, the word teaches the, in in uh, Ecclesiastes, the, every day's uh, a man to born and a man to die. We're all appointed a certain amount of time, and then we're gonna stand before the throne of grace. We're gonna stand before God. So, all of that being said, now of the way. Now, once you get to know God, and you once you start to talk to God and pray to God and learn God and read his good word, take it to the next level. How do you take it to the next level? You share what you discover about God. You share the goodness of God. You share the mercy of God. And that's what we're supposed to do. Our pastor said it's our responsibility as brothers and sisters in Christ, as sons and daughters of the living God, that we are to go into the world and share the gospel with them. Now, I'm going to get back to Noah here. Noah did that. Now, check this out. For 120 years, Noah was a righteous man. He was blameless, right? God comes to Noah and says, I'm going to wipe the earth out. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the wickedness. I'm tired of the violence. People are just downright evil. They're corrupt. It's a horrible place. I can't imagine the, the the conditions of the earth at the time. Uh, I mean, I see the I see the violence now. People are so mean to each other. People are so heartless. People are so unkind. And and you know, 
you don't think the flood can happen again, neither do I, but, you know, the, the word teaches that God's ways are in the wind and the rain, and now we see what happened in Florida and the Carolinas. We see all these tornadoes and all these storms, and you notice these storms seem to be getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Now, God promises that he will not destroy the earth by flood. He says it in the end of, end of the story here, but here's a problem with that. The rainbow is his promise that he will not flood the world again. And what did we do with the rainbow? We took the rainbow and we made it a symbol of wickedness. It was supposed to be a symbol of God's love, a symbol of God's promise, a symbol of God to us, a covenant to God to us. that He's not going to drown the earth ever again. He said, I will not wipe out mankind again. But it doesn't say that he's not going to punish mankind. And it doesn't say that he's not going to bring judgment because it's going to come. It's going to come on all of us. And when we stand before the throne of grace, we're going to have to give an account for everything we've done on this earth. So let's get back to Noah. Noah was a righteous man and he started to build this ark because he was told to build this ark now i believe it's in kentucky you can actually go see the ark some christian brothers and sisters actually built the actual ark according to the measurements in this good book and the the ship is massive it's unimaginable you gotta remember now we didn't we didn't have power equipment we didn't have power tools we didn't have construction crew all noah had was himself and his three sons it's all he had and his wife to build this Mess, and it, it said it took him 120 years to build this thing. And not only that, but he, two of every kind of animal was put in the ark. Pretty uh, pretty amazing. And if you go to Kentucky, I've yet to go see, but I heard it's, it's incredible. Now, let's get back to Noah. In these end days, because that's where we are. Most pastors will tell you what the wickedness. Jesus Christ said that in the end days, wickedness will abound. People will be corrupt. Desperately wicked. Violence everywhere. Violence will fill the land. We're back in that position again. Christ is supposed to return, and they and, and a lot of pastors agree. And and Jesus even says it in the book that we are winding up, man. We are winding up. Nobody knows the day or the time. Continue to life. Continue to live your life and be unafraid and and have a family. But please, whatever you do, this is the most important thing out of everything I say. Please start talking to the Lord if you don't. Please start reading. Please start reading his word. Please start trusting him. Redevelop a relationship with him before you die, before you leave here, before you go before the throne of grace. Get to know him. Get to know his son, Jesus Christ. Clean out your heart. Clean out your conscience. Clean out your mind. Get for forgiveness for being wayward and in rebellion. Do not want to see anyone lose their soul in an eternity in a lake of fire. We don't want that. So... Noah didn't want that either. And for 120 years, Noah talked to the people and he spoke to the people. And in the process of talking to the people and preaching preaching to the people, he was a preacher of righteousness. In the process of doing that, he was building this massive ship. Now, keep in mind, there hadn't been rain on the land. So people have never seen rain and they've never seen a boat. They think this man is completely out of his mind. They think he is nuts. But did he quit? No, he didn't quit. Why? Because people mattered to him because... What God wanted him to do was more important than what people thought of him. And that's where we have to be in our Christian walk. We have to be, God has to be number one priority in our lives and we have to be fearless. And we have work to do. We have work to do to share the good news. See, we we know the good news now. God has opened our eyes and our ears and we understand this knowledge. We understand this good stuff. And and and, and once we understand it's our, our duty, our responsibility to share it with other people. You know, I, I think the first step for most people is to is to get to know their creator first, develop a relationship. And then as you develop that relationship, you discover his son, you discover what Jesus Christ did for you, and then you receive him as your savior. So you're guaranteed a ticket back into heaven. That's right. Just getting to know God is not enough. You need to accept his son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. That's why he's the Lord, Savior. Savior, get it? Because we've been eternally separated because of the sin, because of our sin, we have been eternally separated. That's why Christ is so important to bring us back together with the Father. So if you're living in rebellion, if you don't know God the Father, if you don't, and if your family doesn't know, do it in private. Do it in private. Have a little private time with, with God, your Creator, the Lord. Sit down and talk to Him and pray and say, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. I want to know you. And I guarantee you, He's going to show up, and he's going to show up big in your life. You'll be encouraged today. Have an amazing Sunday. Remember, it's the Lord's Day to try and rest today. Be encouraged. Talk to you soon.